Hello, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, and I've created a special calisthenics shoulder workout, which is also working your triceps quite a bit as well. And the first exercise we've got is a Hindu push-up, which a lot of people just go down and then up to the point where I'm at and then go back down, but I actually go all the way around. So you wanna be in the push-up position when starting, and as you can see, come all the way up like as I am, then move all the way back, bend all the way down to the floor and go around in like a 360 circular movement. And I would recommend trying to do around 14 reps, but if you can't do that amount, then do less. But if you feel that you can do more, then do more because you want to be doing it to failure. And if you're someone who is a beginner, you can do this on your knees. You don't need to be doing it from your feet because yeah, doing it on your knees will make it way, way easier. And you're gonna be doing three rounds of every single exercise and there's gonna be six different exercises in this calisthenics shoulder and tricep workout video. And then what you wanna be doing is making sure that you're resting for around 60 seconds because for a lot of people, if you're resting a lot, shorter than that duration you're not actually going to be able to do the workout with as many reps as you need to fatigue the muscles as much as possible so they grow as much as possible when you are resting and recovering because that is where the muscles grow and normally between each exercise i will try and be as still as possible within my mind and my body and do deep circular breathing in and out through my nose to slow my heart rate down and if you're someone that feels that you want to rest a bit longer, then you can a little bit, but I'd recommend trying not rest longer than 60 seconds. And if you feel that you could rest for a shorter duration of time, then you can. And I would recommend timing your workout. So when you finish each exercise, you can time 60 seconds or however long the rest time you're going to do. So you know when to start the next exercise. And this one is a handstand without any push-ups. It's just a handstand hold. And I did it for around 48 seconds. I will admit, I can't actually hold handstands that long at all, but it's not something I actually do on a very regular basis or train for it. But just do it as long as you can. So again, with this exercise, just like the first exercise, you want to be doing it to failure. And a lot of time, people are actually gonna to wanna to stop with each exercise before they reach the failure point where you can't do any more, but you just need to push through your mind believing that you can't and just keep going and you can go further than what you think. I train people on a regular basis and a lot of people think what their limit is is not actually their limit. So with training, I always say it's more of a mind game than a body game. And out of all the exercises in this, it doesn't require no equipment whatsoever throughout this whole workout. There's one exercise, which you'll see later in the video, where it requires a bar. And obviously for the handstands, if you can't hold a handstand, like I cannot, because I don't really train it to whatsoever, you're gonna need a wall or a pole or something that you can lean against whilst you are doing the handstand. But if you're someone that can do a handstand, then just do a standard handstand hold without any assistance to keep you up whatsoever. And then the next exercise we're moving on to is pseudo plank push-ups. And I'm demonstrating to you here, the further you have back your hands, the harder it's going to be. So find where you need to put your hands to really challenge yourself, but so you can actually do enough reps. If you can't do more than six reps with wherever your hand placement is, then you wanna put them more forward. And I'm actually doing 13 reps here. And again, you get into the push-up position, have your hands to the side, as you see I have them. By actually having them to the side, it's engaging your shoulders a lot more. And try it and go down as low as you possibly can. Your chest doesn't need to touch the floor, but just be very close. And try and keep your neck in line with your back. Try not to drop your head forward whatsoever. And this is quite an intense exercise. And as you go on with getting better and better, 
with calisthenics and you become more stronger and have a higher level of sports performance, you can put your hands back even further. So when it starts to get easier for you, make sure you are putting your hands further and that's gonna help you progress towards long-term things such as planche holds and planche push-ups. And then the next one we've got is jumping straight bars. And what I'm showing here on the lower bar, if you're someone that's really, really beginner level, you would want a lower bar. Or if you're someone that is quite short. So you really want a bar that is going to challenge you so you can actually get the full benefits from what I would call a jumping straight bar dips. And what I'm gonna show you on this bar that I'm on now, which I normally use in my workouts of straight bar dips, how you can do the exercise. And as you can see, get below the bar, have your hands over the top, and you can put your thumb underneath the bar if you want to. And then when you jump up, don't just jump as high as you possibly can, so you reach the top of your arms and just dead straight. When you jump up, as you can see here, and then I'm pushing up and doing that straight bar dip upwards. And then when you come down, don't just drop down, do it slow and controlled and try and come down as far as you can before you just automatically start to fall down as you can see that I am. And as you can see here, I'm demonstrating to you what you shouldn't do. So you see on that second one, I just jumped straight up into it. That is not engaging my shoulders and my triceps nowhere near as much if I'm not jumping up and then actually pushing up into the straight bar dip. So that's something for you to be aware of. And this exercise is something that I did on a regular basis to actually progress towards a muscle up because this is about half the movement of the end of a muscle up, well, the second half of the muscle up movement. So by doing those on a regular basis, just like me, it's gonna help you get towards that much desired muscle up that so many people want to be able to achieve with calisthenics. And with things such as muscle ups, don't even try them for a long time. Just build up your base strength with things such as push-ups, straight bar dips, and other different calisthenics exercises that can help you get towards the muscle up. And for the jumping straight bar dips, I did 17 reps in total, but you ideally wanna be doing around 12 reps or more. And with each exercise, if you wanna maximize muscle mass, you wanna do around the six to 14 rep range. If you're someone that wants to burn more fat, then do a lot more reps. And if you're someone that wants to burn more fat and more calories, if you can do this, in between each exercise you can do active rest as I am doing now, which are jumping jacks. But you need to be someone that has been doing calisthenics for quite a while, because if you haven't, you don't have a high level sports performance and you ain't gonna be able to do every single exercise and every single round. And the next exercise is pike push-ups. And what you try and do is put your body in this like triangle shape. And the further your feet are away from you, the easier it's gonna be. And the closer they are towards you, the harder it is going to be. And when you're doing this, you're doing a type of push-up, but what I would also call a shoulder push-up. So when you're doing it, make sure that your elbows and arms bend back as much as possible. Do not flare them out to the sides because you could risk causing yourself shoulder injury. And that's the last thing that you want. And that's the last thing that I want for you as well. And I don't have the greatest flexibility and mobility. Otherwise, I would try and put my feet closer towards me and be a lot more bent from my hip area. But just do the best that you can do. And for that one, I did 12 of reps. But if you feel that you wanna do more than 12 reps, you can do more than 12 reps. But if you cannot do 12 reps, then just try and not go below six reps. And that's for every single different exercise because what you may find as you go on to the second round and the third round that you can't do as many reps as the first round, so just do the best that you can do. This next exercise, you wanna be laying flat on the ground, but not with your arms straight to the side of you, as I just saw, or right to the side of you. You want it like halfway down, so in a diagonal angle. And what you do 
is lift up from your shoulder area as much as possible and put your weight on your arms around the elbow and forearm area. And then lift up relatively high, but don't be doing ab crunches. So as you can see, I'm not lifting that high up at all. And as you will see, in a short while, I will change my head and neck placement. Do not lift it up as high as I am now. That is not perfect form and I become aware of it after a few reps. You want your neck and head to stay as in line with your upper body as much as you possibly can. And do this with a relatively slow and controlled momentum and focus your attention upon the shoulder area and make sure you're using your shoulders as much as possible and not the other muscles because it's gonna use your abs a bit but if you're not focusing upon the shoulder muscles as much as possible and doing them in slow controlled form, it's gonna be mostly your abs. So just be very, very mindful around this when you are doing this exercise. And I call this exercise the floor iron cross raises. And for the first round, I did 16 reps. And what I say is for every following round, I will personally do around the same reps, if not more for each different exercise, because I can do, but you may not be able to do that. And that is absolutely fine. And for me to get the results that I have with my physique, I only do this type of workout once a week. And the reason why I can is because I do every exercise to failure. So it's tearing the muscle fibers as much as possible so it can maximize the muscle growth. And then as you get stronger, you can do some fun things such as what I'm doing on the rings. And now I love using the rings. If you haven't used them before, I'd recommend getting some and I will put some links down below for some good quality rings in case you're interested in them. And yeah, you actually want your head a bit further down than what I've got now. But that's it for this video. Have any questions, leave them down below. If you like the video, like it down below. Don't forget to share this with other people that may want to watch this calisthenics shoulder workout video. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell notification button to be notified of when new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming every single week. So stay strong, fit, and energetic. Peace.